Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And welcome to our service of worship on this uh, 16th of July, and welcome to all those who are joining us through NiagaraOnlineWorship.com. I have uh, a few announcements that I wish to share this morning. Uh, first of all, folks um, were asking whether or not we went on our prayer walk yesterday to Queenston Heights. Well, I know some of you said you stayed home because it looked like rain. Well, there was a number of us who actually did go out and we braved the elements and uh, we were pretty fortunate. We, we had our prayer walk, we had our picnic time and we got right back to the car. We put everything in the trunk and then the skies just <laughs> opened up. And we actually got quite soaked between just closing the trunk and getting into the driver's side door. But it was a great time. And uh, the third and final of our prayer walk series will happen on uh, September 2nd. And we are going to um, do a prayer walk down around or along the Niagara Falls. Um, more information about that will be coming up. Also, um, <clears throat> Some of you will have seen on the calendar that we have a trivia night coming up. Now, um, we've been saying it's free, and we've also been saying it's a fundraiser. So how does that work? Well, it's, it's a fun night for the congregation. It's going to happen down at the Embrace Center uh, next, uh, next Saturday at 6 p.m. And you can bring your own snacks, or you can buy chips and popcorn from the Sunday school kids. Who will be there and this is all of course uh, to raise money for our vacation Bible school that is coming up this summer and there are forms that are available the uh, we have a team that's going around to a, a couple different churches and the week that we are here at st. John Stevensville is August 21st to 25th that is when the VBS team will be here at our own home church so, uh, but I would encourage as many people who possible to come out to the Embrace Center next Sunday evening or Saturday evening and we'll do, uh, it says superhero trivia, but don't let that, uh, that put you off. It's just, we, we kind of went with that because our theme is uh, uh, heroes, is the VBS theme. And as you know, uh, our youth group finished their series based on the, the uh, Marvel uh, Universe and they, uh, to talk about call and, and where God's calling our youth to be in the church. So, so as, a, as a nod to that and a nod to going ahead, it's a superhero trivia, but not entirely superhero trivia. So please come out to that. If you have questions, ask Victoria. <laughs> and, and thirdly, I also wanted to mention that, uh, that on the 19th at noon here at the church, we are having our uh, senior ladies uh, tea, high tea, um, and that is for ladies 90 and over, um, so the senior, senior ladies. So that is coming up this week, and if you have any questions about that, please see either Phyllis or Glenda. Uh, they, uh, they will be able to tell you a lot more than, than I can about that. And finally, uh, there was a, a gal from this area that a number of you folks know, uh, a woman named Elaine Berger who has written a devotional book. And um, Phyllis can also tell you about that if you are interested in learning a little bit more about that. Um, I know that some of you ladies may, may know her. Am I forgetting any other announcements? Oh, yes, they were sitting right in front of me. I almost forgot my poppies. They're sitting right in front of me here. Uh, the uh, Ridgeway Legion, um, you know, at the Cenotaph every November, they've got that lovely kind of cascading uh, nets full of poppies. Well, the, the ladies there are, have so many poppies that came in, they were wondering if we could help them by putting some on one of the nettings. So out in the hall, over the summer, I'm just going to leave uh, the net set up, and we've got bags and bags of poppies, so if you want to just take a minute and... I know some people have uh, used a darning needle to sew them on, but other people have just knotted them. They all have four strings attached. Just uh, tie it really tight to that netting so it doesn't blow off in the wind. And, uh, and that would be a great help to the, the, the Legion folks from Ridgeway. And I said, sure, we can do that. So don't make me have to put on thousands of poppies. But, uh, <laughs> so everybody did a few, that would be great. Uh, so I, I do believe that's all the announcements, so let's call one another to worship. 
This morning's worship, like every Sunday's worship, is a celebration of God's love. It has been quite a week for us, for some good, for others difficult. God's love is cast lavishly for you. We surely need that love. Come and celebrate those who are joyful. Come those who are weary and be healed. God's love is given to all. Come and live in that love. Lord, help us to be open to your healing word and love for our lives. Let us share that love by drawing the circle ever wider, and that's going to be our first hymn this morning, Draw the Circle Wide, More Voices, number 145. Let us pray together. Lord, you know us so well. We thank you for your presence in our lives, even when we don't recognize it. This day we have gathered, coming from a week of mostly routine, but also moments of unexpected happenings. Make us ready to be the stronger witnesses for your love, as we receive your word. And find our spirits closer and wise healing. Amen. Amen. <coughs> our psalm for this morning is Psalm 139. And if you would like to follow along in your hymn book, it's on page 861.
O oh God, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You discern my path and the places I rest. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it, O oh God, completely. You guard me from behind and before and lay your hand upon me. It is beyond my love. Where can I escape from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I lie down in the grave, you are even there. If I take, oh, if I take wing with the dawn and alight at the sea's farthest limits, there also your hand will be guiding me, your powerful hand holding me fast. If I say, let the darkness cover me, and my day be turned to night. Even darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. It was you who formed my inward parts. You fashioned me in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am your beauty, wonderfully made. Wondrous are your works, that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being fashioned in secret, intricately woven in the mystery of clay. Your eyes saw my substance taking shape. In your book, my every day was recorded. All my days were fashioned, even before they came to be. How deep your designs are to me, O God, how great their number. I try to count them, but they are more than the sand. I come to the end, I am still with you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. Watch closely, lest I follow a path of error. And guide me in the everlasting way. This Sunday, we return once again to the teachings found in Paul's letter to the church in Rome. This week, are affirmed that nothing could ever separate us from the love of God. Our reading from Romans 8, chapters 26 to 39. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know that we ought to pray for, but the Spirit intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches out our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be confirmed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters, and those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us, how will he also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charges against whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ who died, more than that, 
who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hear what God is saying to the church through these scriptures today. I'm going to invite you once again to uh, stand and sing as you are able, and uh, I think this one was a special request. Hymn number 670, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. Oh 
Thank you, Ian. So, <clears throat> in our reading uh, from Romans this morning, there's a verse that says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to, to them who are called according to God's purpose. That's Romans 8, uh, 28. And I'm sure most of you know that verse because it's one of the first verses that we tend to learn in Sunday school. And we start off learning just all things work together for good. And then, uh, then we add some more as the kids get a little older, a little more to memorize. And we know that all things work together for good to them who love God. And then as they get a bit older and they can memorize even more, we get the whole verse. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to God's purpose. And that, of course, is how we uh, grow and we mature in our faith. We, we get a little more context. We do a little deeper examination. Because otherwise, at, at our grown-up age, just saying something like all things work together for good sounds... Uh, naive at best, and at worst, a little bit dishonest. But it's also good to remember that the epistle to, uh, to the church in Rome was written quite late in Paul's career. And by that time, he certainly uh, had experienced his, his own uh, persecutions and hardships and uh, even being shipwrecked. So he was not naive about the realities of the Christian life. But he still had hope and faith. Let us pray. God of goodness and hope, be with us this morning as we reflect upon your holy words of scripture. Let it speak to us and let it renew us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, when I decided... To, uh, to undertake this, this deeper engagement with the Book of Romans over the summer, I did actually take the time to in intentionally pick out pieces of scripture and passages that would provide this fuller overview without, you know, getting it so bogged down that it felt like a seminary course. Then, of course, uh, you know, as we all know last week, my best laid plans uh, got all messed up when I ended up sick. And uh, Reverend Bill had to step in at the last minute and preach for me. And I got to tell you, it's really good, actually, to be in team ministry with your husband, who already knew that I was going to be too sick to preach long before I, uh, I would admit that I wasn't going to show up last Sunday morning. So thanks, babe. <laughs> However, the thing is uh, that in order to understand the passage from chapter 8, it's helpful to step back and touch on chapter 7 that I would have done last week. Because it's in chapter 7 that Paul very honestly talks about his personal struggles. That he has some, some behaviors in his life that is bringing him great anguish. And it's obvious as we, as we read that chapter that this some sin that, that he has been struggling with for a long time and that he continues to struggle with. Now both chapters 7 and 8, they fall into uh, a section of the letter that's really about how God is creating a new humanity. And so, names some real life struggles for the church community, including Paul's very passionate confession about the struggle to do good that he knows he should do, the good that he wants to do, and yet doesn't always manage to do that. And that would have been back in Romans 7, 19. He says it's like a war that is waging inside of him. His new life or his new nature that, that has been redeemed through the saving uh, work of Jesus Christ and his old sinful nature that, that actually has had years and years of habit and practice on its side, uh, that, that they're in this struggle within him. 
It's like an addiction that is eating away at his soul. And even when he doesn't give into it, it's still always kind of there at, at the back of his head, tempting him with lies. So it's important to remember, friends, that there is no place in Scripture where Christians are promised to have an easy life. We are not saved and then God waves a magic wand and makes everything uh, easy with sunshine and rainbows. That's, that's not the reality of our lives. Instead, we must learn to embrace God's promises and, and to learn to live into those promises as we live and we grow and we mature. And of course, uh, Paul's writings always do bring us back around again to God's grace. Because it's not simply a matter of us having the greater willpower. It's a matter of us trusting in God's grace to make those changes that we cannot make on our own. And so it is in that understanding of chapter 7 that, uh, that we get to this otherwise seemingly naive verse that all things work together for good. And all things ultimately work together for good because ultimately God's love will triumph, if not in this world, in the next. But we shouldn't just be waiting for the next world. We should be living that truth in this one as well. This is the life we're living in. This is the life we're working in. This is when we as a community are called to witness to the hope that is in us based on our belief in Jesus Christ. And we can live it because the God who created us loves us and nothing, nothing separates us from that love. And Paul even gives a uh, a list of examples. What about hardship or, or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? Can these things separate us from the love of God? And he says, no, absolutely not. Nothing can separate us from the love of God that is found in Jesus Christ. And then Paul continues because he says that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor anything present or anything to come nor powers nor heights nor depths nor anything else in all creation, absolutely nothing is ever able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ, and that is pretty definitive. I, um, I have a, a preacher friend from another denomination who uh, once tried to argue with me that we could remove ourselves from God's love that somehow by choosing particular uh, sins or sinning in particular ways that we could remove ourselves from the grasp of God's love. Know what I say to that? No. No. Just no. My friend is wrong. We cannot make God stop loving us. Sure, we can, uh, we can stress God with our kind of cranky, stubborn ways, we can fall short of the glory of God. Paul even covered that way back in chapter, uh, in chapter 3 when we started our series. For all have sinned and, and fallen short of the glory of God, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes, we fall short, but God already knew that. God knew we were going to do that, so that's not enough either to remove ourselves from God's love. So, you know, there is a very slim chance that any of us here are going to face famine or peril or the sword. But note that right in that same verse, hardship is listed. And hardship is a very broad term. Because we are all going to face some sort of hardship. And those hardships are going to, at times, test our faith. Those hardships are going to, to cause us to struggle with that idea that everything will ultimately work out for the good. But when we are struggling, when we are too sad or too weak or, or too grieved, too just stuck in grief, 
to even pray. Verse 26 reminds us that the Holy Spirit is with us, interceding for us with what it says, with sighs too deep for words. Now that's quite a turn of phrase, isn't it? Sighs too deep for words. Only those who have lived it know how profound those words are. Uh, my, my mentor, when I was back in Halifax, Stu Clark, whom I've mentioned before, used to tell me that, uh, that when I was working as a hospital chaplain, that it was good practice to, um, as I left each hospital room, to take a deep breath, to exhale, and to say amen. Those are the kind of prayers that God also hears. Yesterday, as I mentioned, uh, there was a group of us who participated in the second prayer walk of our summer series. And though uh, each participant sets their own agenda and they follow their own path, the series is designed to allow for intentional time alone with God, to, to just walk and to pray about anything that's on your heart whether it was just to, to simply delight in the beauty of creation or a time to struggle with some deeper questions. It is an intentional time to just take it all before God. And we need those times in our lives to just be reflective and, and to be honest about things. Because when people ask us how we are, what do we say? Fine, thank you. Some days, the most honest prayer we offer is a sigh or a tear. But we have to be able to just lean into those difficult moments to grow our faith to the place that we can confess that despite it all, we believe that all things will work together for good for those who love God and live into their call according to God's purpose. Because, friends, we're not naive. We're just striving to be faithful. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'd invite you uh, once again to stand and sing as you are able. We're going to sing hymn number 497, Nearer My God to Thee. <laughs>
Friends, at this time, as we do every week in our service, we take the opportunity to give back to God our tithes and our offerings, and I will ask the uh, usher to now bring forth those. share with me in our offertory prayer. Gracious God, we remember all the ways in which you have entered our lives, and we are grateful. Receive our tithes and offerings as a symbol of that gratitude. Amen. Thank you. Please join me in prayer. Loving God, as always, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the rains that fell yesterday. We thank you for the sun that shines this morning. We thank you for the myriad ways that you support, enrich, and nourish your creation. And we thank you that you have called us to be both steward and co-creator with you. We pray that we will live up to the faith that you have shown in us. Lord, this morning we, we hold in prayer all those who live in the face of prejudice hatred, and barriers that are, that are placed in their way, false barriers created to separate and divide. We pray for all those who are denied opportunity because of the color of their skin, for those who are denied movement because of the countries of their origin, and those who are threatened with violence because they dare to express their love for someone whom others have deemed inappropriate or sinful. And Lord, this morning we pray particularly for for those who find themselves seeking refuge, those whom we have labeled refugees, those who sit in camps awaiting the next step on their journey, those who have found refuge only to find that they are in difficult and sometimes dire straits, we pray for those who have been welcomed to Canada only to find they are living 
on the streets. But we also pray for all those within the borders or within the bounds of our nation who find themselves homeless or at risk of homelessness. Those who don't make the evening news. Those who find a corner in which to set up a makeshift bed out of the elements. We pray for those who we are confronted with daily, who lack shelter, food, water, companionship. Lord, we also pray for all those who are facing the reality of rising costs in their lives, and we pray for those who have remedy. And we pray that the leaders of our nation, the leaders of our provinces, our communities, will listen to those voices that are offering solution, that are offering life in the face of death. And Lord, we pray for all those who are dealing with the, with the realities of climate change, those who have wildfires burning in their backyards, those who are, who are struggling with tornadoes in their midst, those who are living in the midst of drought and of flood. And we pray that we might be courageous to make the changes in our lives that will have a positive impact on the climate around us. And we pray for those who deal with the violence in their lives on a daily basis. <coughs> the ongoing war in the Ukraine. The introduction of new, more deadly, and more volatile weapons. We pray for those who are dealing with violence in the streets. We think particularly of those who live in Baltimore and in Toronto as we hear ongoing reports of gun violence and death. And we pray for those who deal with violence in their homes. And Lord, as we enter into this time of, of worship, we come with many prayers upon our hearts, personal and individual. And so we hold before you the names of those who have come into our circle. We hold before you Wilson and Julianne, Val and Billy, Anya, Jim and family, Nick and family, Tom, Fran and Jan, Dalal and Bashir, Muhammad, their son, as he tries to find a way to enter into the safety of Canada. We pray for Reem, Leanne, for Sandy, and for Christopher. And Lord, you know that we have many prayers that rest in the silence of our hearts, and we are confident that you hear even in the midst of that silence. We offer those prayers to you, bringing them before you, confident that as you hear, you listen, and when you listen, you respond. And we bring those prayers to you in the unity of the Christian tradition, the Christian faith, with those before us and those in places unknown to us. And we gather them together using the words that Jesus offered as, as a model for all prayer as we sing.
and I'm going to invite you once again to stand as you are able and to sing number 481, sent forth by God's blessing. benediction together I just want to remind you that uh, following the service we're gonna have a time of fellowship of lemonade on the lawn uh, we're just kind of waiting to see how mucky the the grass was or how wet the grass was before we put the table out but uh, look, hasn't rained yet so I'm gonna say we're gonna do it uh, but also to remind folks that the Creation Alive uh, exhibit is up in our Morning Star Gallery as well. If you haven't seen that, please take a moment and, and check that out. But as we leave this place, let us share in a blessing. <coughs> May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus. May we together with one voice glorify